Today here on RumbleStrip.net and 10 Minute Test Drive. Hey, it's another crossover. This time it's the Volkswagen Tiguan. This is the 2018 model on the MQB platform, completely revamped from the last generation, which was much needed. So it's another crossover, and if you uh, watch this channel or are familiar with this channel, you know our love for these things. But could this one change your mind? That's what we find out on this episode of RumbleStrip.net and 10 Minute Test Drive. So we booked this Volkswagen Tiguan on purpose, believe it or not. Um, side work, do some work for a couple Volkswagen dealerships and have to write copy for it. So one in the, it's always good to know when you're writing copy to actually understand the vehicle so that you can maybe highlight some things that you're not gonna see on, uh, on a spreadsheet, which tends to be how most people view vehicles these days, on a spreadsheet, don't get it drive the vehicle, then you understand some things. Um, not that I'm poking holes in commenters from other previous crossover videos. The Volkswagen Tiguan had no expectations for it. Uh, had poked around it at a couple auto shows, but had spent zero time in it. So the immediate shock was, hey, this thing is not bad. Okay, this is a fully loaded SEL Plus, excuse me, SEL Premium with 4Motion. So this is a pretty much top, not pretty much, I don't know that there's an option this this doesn't come with. In fact, this has one option in it uh, that is a $500 option for third row seats. Just skip it. Uh, we'll show you the photo here. They're worthless. I, I don't know who you were sticking back there other than maybe a you know, a three-year-old in a car seat, but that'd be such a pain in the ass to get them in and out of there. I don't know why you would. So it has three rows to maybe take a box for somebody, somebody, something, but don't bother. It's, it's pointless. So based off the MQB platform, we can expect some good things, right? I mean, the Volkswagen Golf is an amazing vehicle. It's one of our, if not our favorite, uh, depending on trim and some other things uh, you know for the for that four door or five door hatch segment sorry and the platform has proved to be very good very solid so this is built off of that platform and you know what that DNA transfers and it transfers very well most crossovers are just there this one has some feel to it and that's not just because you can adjust the suspension a little bit here which you can notice a little things it firms the ride up maybe a little more than it should but you know it is adjustable if you want it but the dna from that mqb platform really does transfer this drives incredibly well and i and i really want to stress this this vehicle drives incredibly well especially for a crossover it's fluid, it's effortless. Now, some of that is to do with the engine. This is the uh, two liter turbocharged engine. It's 184 horsepower, 221 foot pounds of torque. The big news on that, and let me get the numbers exactly right here. I think I remember them, but we'll just reference them here. So the 221 foot pounds of torque is available from 1600 to 4300 RPM. And you notice that. Again, that's part of why this thing feels so effortless to drive. You pretty much have maximum torque from not much off idle through most of your driving range. So this accelerates very nicely. Horsepower is a little, is up higher, but you know, it's, it's achievable, right? It's not at redline, which is what most vehicles are, especially if they're naturally aspirated. Turbocharged, obviously a little bit different. The ride on this thing is is excellent. It's on the 
firmer, more controlled side, which may not appeal to some some people, but I don't know why you wouldn't, because, okay, it doesn't feel like you're riding on a pillow. Fine, no worries. Uh, but you understand everything that's going on around you as you drive this, which, again, unusual for a, a crossover vehicle. This has an eight-speed automatic transmission. It uh, it's fine. Do notice some difference in the programming, though. You in, in, and I say programming in air quotes. In that normally you drop it into drive, it's drive. It's it it's very aggressive and it's upshifting as most vehicles are. You pull it back one, it goes into a sport mode, and I wouldn't call that sport. I would call that correct, meaning that. It holds gears nicely, it shifts nicely, you rarely are in the wrong gear. Whether you're just rolling into a throttle or stepping into it, it just, the response is excellent in sport. So this Tiguan is equipped with start-stop. And that's about what it feels like. From off to where it, uh, where it cranks up again. Not too bad, it's not too annoying. You do have the ability to turn it off, but as you'd expect, shut the car off, it resets, and then you'll have to do it again. One of those things, it's not bad. It's certainly one of the better implementations. It's not the best, but it's just one of those things you've got to live with. And maybe you just remember to turn it off every time you get in. One thing we wanted to call out on this vehicle is that the interior is quite good. There's minimal use of hard plastics, which is good and it's better than other vehicles in the category at a similar price and we'll get to the price here in a couple minutes um, nice soft touch materials all around hard plastic points are typically in areas you're not going to they're not in high touch point areas other than sort of the center console area here that is hard plastic it'd be nice if it was padded it's always one of our things that we like to to see you know it's one of those things but normally it's more lower on the door sill uh, on the door panels and in the in the uh, rear doors again lower in there but all your main touch points uh, are nice soft materials with a good feel reasonable graining is it the best material no but it's appropriate for the class um, and certainly better than we've seen in other vehicles i would say that this interior is much better than the chevy equinox we had a few months ago uh, the Ford Escape is getting a little old now. It's better than that interior. The Rogue, which is also a competitor, you know, better than that for sure. Mazda CX-5, I got to think about that one a little bit because it's been a while. But I would say it's at least on par with that. Maybe, maybe a little better, but at least on par with that. So the interior is a nice place to be. The seats, very comfortable. And, um, you know, you could definitely do some miles in these things controls are well laid out again it's sort of golf based or very golf based so it's as you would expect do you want to mention the fender audio system in this uh it is one of our favorite oem systems because it has some pretty good dynamics uh, the bass is very full um you can feel it but it doesn't get obnoxious the range from the highs, mids, and lows, whether it's vocals, you know, like breathy Nora Jones uh, vocals, uh, whether you want some kick and rock drums. Um, sorry, by the way, the collision avoidance thing is a little aggressive on this thing where it warns you. Uh, we went around a corner and it beeped, not just there. So, um, but sorry, back to the Fender Audio. It's really good. If you're thinking about whether you should get it or not, you should get it. It's it's really good. Uh, the other thing, which reading through the materials I hadn't realized that this does, is this does FLAC, which is the free lossless audio codec. Now, there's about one-tenth of one percent of the people who are going to be buying this who could give a crap about FLAC or even know what FLAC is. But we plug some, plug some audio where well, you have some FLAC files in here, and I got to tell you, you notice it compared to running mp3 files to the flac files through this fender system you can notice a quality of difference it's just a richer fuller sound all around so 
very cool. And if you don't know about flak, well, you know, duck, duck, go it and uh, learn some things. And, uh, you know, maybe you don't care about the quality of your audio. I do. One thing to note in this is that the Tiguan, at least in this version, uh, is an exclusive North American market vehicle. Uh, Volkswagen marketing mentions that it is eight and a half inches longer than what's available in other parts, in, well, in Europe anyways, which is interesting in that I'm not sure, I'd, I'd be curious if they're trying to throw three rows in a Tiguan when it's even shorter, because there's no way in hell that math works. Uh, it doesn't really work in this version. Uh, it is also, I believe, almost 11 inches longer than the previous version. Now, my next door neighbor has a previous generation Tiguan, so I was able to park it next to hers just to get a, uh, a brief sample of it. And yeah, it's, it's a pretty noticeable difference between the two. And now this has proper, not only proper second row leg room, but good space behind, you know, good space for carrying things behind the second row. You put the third row up, as you'll see in the photo we're rolling in here, it gets a little tight. You know, it is what it is. But overall, interior packaging is good. Space is good. We're able to load up quite a bit in here now. Again, it, for you spreadsheet people, you can say, well, this has this much more, you know, room on paper. Well, there's paper and then there's actual usable space. The usable space on this is quite good. Going to the uh, sheet here to uh, go over a couple things here with you. Um, from a safety standpoint, it has at least, again, in top level trim, these are options or available in other trim levels. But uh, again, at SEL Premium, we do have lane assist, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic, adaptive cruise control, you saw forward collision, uh, a whole suite of your modern safety items. And that that's fine, it, it's something you would expect at this price level. And we'll get to that here again, as I said, in a second. Let's talk about fuel economy. So for this four motion version, it's rated at 21 city, 27 highway, 23 combined. We've actually gotten 24 combined and about 28, 29 on the highway. So, you know, not trying to drive it easy, just driving it and it's getting better than EPA mileage. So good on that. That's not something you see a ton of anymore or rarely. Can you get EPA? Sure, but exceed it in a diesel maybe, but diesel and Volkswagen. Oops, we're not supposed to talk about that anymore. All right, so let's get to the nitty gritty here and talk about price. So base price on this is $23,550. As we said, it has the $500 uh, option for the third row seats. With uh, delivery, you're looking at $38,950. That is a pretty decent chunk of change, but not unreasonable in this category. In fact, that's essentially competitive in the category. You can probably wheel and deal at your local Volkswagen dealer and get a better price on that. Um, Again, we wrote this down so we get the numbers right here. The Volkswagen, the Tiguan starts for a front drive version in base trim at 25,345 or 26,645 uh, for your four motion. If you want to go for the SE, that's about 30 grand. SEL, which is probably what most people will go for, SE or SEL, SEL comes in at about 34 grand. So let's wrap this up. I am impressed with this vehicle. And here's why I'm impressed with it. Because I like it. I don't generally have time for crossovers. I just, they're not interesting. I don't see the point. This is a crossover that I have time for, I like, and that impresses me. So if you are in the market for a mid-sized crossover, this should be at the top of your list. Now, a lot of people will have a problem with Volkswagen because of the whole emissions thing uh, and some well-deserved reputation with reliability. Well, Volkswagen has now their uh, six-year, 72,000-mile warranty, so that shouldn't be a problem. If you have issues, it's going to get covered. 
Uh, if you have problems with what they've done in the past with emissions, well, nothing is going to change your mind, so it doesn't matter. But for those of you who are looking for a vehicle that will take five people, I guess seven if you want to do the third row theoretically, um, but five people very comfortably, get good fuel economy, be nice to drive, be a good place to be, have a nice stereo system with all the modern electronics that you could ever want in it. Um, yeah, this Volkswagen Take One ticks all the boxes, and I like it. If you like what you see here, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down twice. Said Pro Media. Good job. Good on you. Um, but that'll wrap it up on this episode of RumbleStrip.net and 10-Minute Test Drive. We'll see you next time.